Hey guys, I'm back for another video, and welcome to my game. Yes, this is a game that I made, and this is the first time I'm showing it to you guys. This is version indev.03. So, yeah, this is a very, 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 very early version of a game I've been working on for the past two months now. And yeah this is what i've got so as you can see it is a um it kind of reminds me of pokemon how your character is always in the middle of the screen and when you press w a s and d it will move you around the game world and as you can see i'm inside of like a cave thing right now it does say lobby in the top right corner but that's just a um that's a placeholder name that's not actually what this place is it's kind of like the testing grounds like the first area and as you can see, there's other little characters around, and if you're wondering why there's like a blotch of like black on one side, that's to show which direction their face is on, like which direction they're facing. So as of now, you can see I'm obviously facing whichever direction I'm moving, which makes sense in a game world. And a couple of these NPCs are roaming around randomly, and if I press this button, then they're all going to start roaming around randomly. Because I programmed some AI into these guys, and I have a little toggle, like if I press the button, like the one button that does that, if I press two, then they hilariously do this. They start chasing after me. Nah, get away! And then I can press one again, and then they'll just start roaming around randomly again. And you're probably wondering what this turd-looking thing is right here. This is a door. <laughs> as weird as it looks, it's a door. So as of now, they kind of function as teleporters, but if you think about it, if I were to say put this on like the wall up here, then it would make more sense as a door, but as of now, it's just it kind of looks like a teleporter since it's just floating there. And if I go in here, boom! I'm inside of the hallway, which has a grid as the floor, which I did on purpose. Everything that you see here is intentional, except for like two glitches. But I'm not going to uh, show you guys the glitches unless you really, really want to see it. So, yeah, that's that. And another thing, you're probably wondering what these boxes are. Now, if I'm... If I go up to one of these boxes and then I press F, then boom, it goes away. So that is an item that you can pick up off the ground by pressing F. F is like the action button, so to speak. So you use it to talk to people, to open doors. You don't have to open doors yet to pick up items. And yeah, I can pick up all these items, which currently have a hitbox. Actually, I just realized... Um, Items don't normally have hitboxes, but for the purpose of testing NPC um, AI, I made it so they do have a hitbox. And one thing that's pretty cool is you can, co you can go up to one of these guys and press F. And as you can see in the top left corner, hi, I'm Bob, he says, if you press F. And everything, that one says, Brandon! <laughs> and the game pauses while you're reading the text. And you press F again for it to go away. And this one... Hello, my name is Joe, and I think Glenn is up here. He got his own little character, ASD, because he spams my Skype chat all the time with ASD, so I decided why not give him a thing. And I programmed in a default text, so if I never put in a line for an NPC, they just say dot, dot, dot. So that's that. And I've got some environment objects over here, like rocks that you can't pick up, but they're there. And they have a hitbox anyway, so you can't run through them. And hit detection is a big part of this game. You can't go out of the map, obviously. That's something I established. And if you go inside here, of course, there's new bounds. Like, there's new areas where you can and cannot go. And I can talk to this guy. But you have to be, like, not directly looking at him like this, but close enough. Like, it's weird to explain. But if I'm like this to him, where, like, see this? Where only one, like one third of my character is facing towards him then it will not talk to him but if two thirds or more then i can and he says hero bill here <laughs> and yeah so if you're wondering about this texture on the ground this is just like a temporary stone texture i just kind of made and these are also stone textures they're not really they're, none of this is permanent including the characters this is all just placeholders as of now and it shows your coordinates in the top left, which is very, very useful. And as you can see, the coordinates go from 0, 0, which is in the top. I, I can use my mouse, actually. Right there. That's 0, 0. And this is 1, 1. And your coordinate is based on the center of your character. So, yeah, your character is 3 squares by 3 squares. 
which um, is something that it took a step away from most games in that aspect. I've never seen anything like that. But yeah, so the item system also works the same way as um, the NPC system, I'm pretty sure. Actually, no, it doesn't. You can still pick up items that are like right on your side. You don't have to be directly facing towards it, which is useful. So, you're probably wondering what this door is, and I'm about to go in it. And it causes some lag because it's quite a big area. This is the yard, which has a grass texture, as you can see. And I made it, if you can look at the coordinates, I made it 1,000 by 1,000 squares, which demonstrates the capacity of this engine I made here. This is basically a game engine. So, it shows the capacity of how much you can load on this engine. And I think it's pretty good, but as of now, it loads up the whole map, not just what you can see. And I need to fix that because I do want this application to be playable by everybody. And I do realize I have a very powerful computer, so it might be a little biased to say that this game records well. So, yeah. And I am recording the game with OBS right now, which is awesome. And it is in, I think, 480p. I, I'm on the lowest default resolution, which, of course... I need to do all my testing in that resolution because that's like the resolution of all the textures. So when you go to like 1080p, it'll stretch out the textures. But as of now, it is still in 16 by 9 aspect ratio, which is why I'm able to post a YouTube video about it that doesn't have black bars, <laughs> which is awesome. But there is one other feature that I did not show you guys yet, and it is pretty awesome. It is going to be part of my level editor mode. So yes, I am going to make it so... I'm lazy, if you guys didn't know. So I'm making a whole intricate system for making maps. A very easy way to make maps. So as you can see, my mouse is here. And if I click... Boop. Yeah, I can put down items with the mouse. So this basically demonstrates that I can put down things on the map. Um, anything I want, really. It doesn't have to be an item. It can be another stone tile it could be wood it could be a rock or a door or an npc i can have like a whole key on the side of the screen and then maybe another one over here and i click on the thing i want to place down and then click on the screen and it'll put it there and then maybe for an npc for example i could click on the npc thing click down and then a little thing will say uh, or come up saying what do you want to name this npc and what line do you want to give him and of course they're not going to be single line npcs there's going to be like a whole part of the game that has like your um reputation with certain people it's gonna be very much like skyrim and fallout like bethesda type games like rpg um so you have reputations you have levels you have skills all those things and the combat system if you want to look into it is a mo a heavily modified version of oh and that showed off one of the glitches right there if you saw that if you go above y core if you go yeah, I think it's like, I don't know which Y, here we go. Yeah, if you go into this Y coordinate area here, <laughs> if you're above this line, basically, all hitboxes stop working. Um, That works, though. But above this line, all hitboxes stop working. So I'm going to either have to put a permanent wall there for every map or just fix that somehow. I don't know how I'm going to do it. But anyway, the combat system in this is a heavily modified version of the... Well, it's not implemented yet, but it's planned to be... Jeez, i got to get my sentence out. It's a heavily modified version of the combat system in Pokemon Mystery Dungeon. And I used to love those games, and I thought that was a great combat system, but no other game has anything similar to it. And I thought something like that would be perfect for this game, but not the exact same thing, obviously, because these aren't Pokemon, and they're going to most likely have swords and guns, and they're not going to, like, shoot water and fire and ice everywhere <laughs> which makes sense um i might have magic i don't know I, i'm planning to have this like a modern time game but oh another thing that's kind of cool is the doors they have a hitbox too you can't go into the side of a horizontal door like this and you can't go like sideways you have to go like a little bit more directly into it like two-thirds of your character is in front of the door like one third of the character being in front of the door does not work so, yeah, that's that. Oh, and um, oh, one thing that's kind of cool. If I go into this door here. Come on. Oh, there we go. I'm just going to wait for it to load. Because loading times is something that 
like that right there, that long load time is the reason why I want to have it only load what's on the screen so that it doesn't have a load time because how awesome would it be if you have a game that just doesn't have load times? Like, that would be freaking cool. And anyway, this is a cool looking illusion. If I just keep moving and like placing items down with the mouse, whee, whee. <laughs> and also the engine is very efficient in the fact that I could literally cover this entire map and items and it will not change the frame rate. Um, that's some clever code optimization that you don't need to know about, but I can place down an infinite amount of items and it will not kill the game. So all you people that take all your stuff in Skyrim and plop it on the ground, you're not going to have to deal with that issue in this game. <laughs> because as you guys know, if you take everything you've gotten into in the game ever and drop it on the ground, you will most likely kill your game with frame rate. Um, and I'm pretty sure the NPCs are the same way, except for when they change directions, because then they're getting a different skin. You know what? Maybe they won't. <laughs> I don't know. It, it's a lot of testing to be done in this game. So that's really all I have to explain to you guys. I mean, there's probably a couple other features I left out, like the pause game feature and the inventory feature, both of which do not have any like GUI. So it's just kind of a blank screen, but they don't really work right now. Like when you pause the game, it stays paused and you can't unpause until you restart the game. So I'm not going to bother showing that off. But if you're wondering what language I made all this in, it was in Visual Basic, which is kind of an unorthodox way of making a game. But it's the only language I know in depth enough to do something like this. Because Java, I just don't know anything about graphics libraries. And this is a great starting language. You know what? I'm actually going to show you guys the code real quick. So let's just do this. Bam. So boom, full screen mode. <laughs> so yeah, what is that? What is that window sound doing? I don't know. Okay, so I'm going to exit out of the game. And this is the file that's currently being made to make this video, by the way. It's not even completed yet. <laughs> so this is the tile mapper. This is the thing that puts down all the tiles. But I think the best thing to show you would be the main class. Obviously, because this is like the main file where everything happens. So, just look at this crap. Um, this we don't need to worry about. But all these other things, like these plus signs, like these are bits of code that I just minimized basically. So, I don't have to look at them. But this is the main class. It's got almost 125 lines of code. And this doesn't count because this is like idea section. Or the idea section where I put notes. That's what these green things are. They're not counted in code. They're just kind of like a reference to me. But, yeah, look at this. And then you have the character handler, which obviously handles all the stuff having to do with the character and hitboxes and things like that. This has over 200 lines of code in it. This handles everything to do with the doors, only about 70 lines of code, nothing too bad. Tile mapper, around 60. And update area, which is what... This is the code that handles when you go through a door and it, like, changes which area you're in. So, this, like, clears all the, uh clears the screen puts down the new stuff and yeah a lot of work went into this oh and the npc handle was freaking annoying to make trust me 200 lines of code but this is like saying that it's annoying doesn't do justice trust me i have uh <laughs> the crap i had to go through to get all this to work properly oh my gosh so that is about it for now, I know I said that like five minutes ago, but this time I'm not lying. <laughs> so leave in the comments down below what ideas you might have for a certain game that would be RPG style. That would be really, really cool <laughs> because I might take it into account because, of course, this game is in such early development stages that at least it's presentable to you guys, but it's definitely not taking any single direction yet. So, I'm open to ideas, definitely. Oh, and one thing that I just forgot to tell you guys is that you can't place items out of the map. So, that's fun. <laughs> Some optimization there. But, that's it. So, I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys later.